Originally, I didn't have any plans to see this new film. I'm not going to discuss the whole whitewashing controversy. I've already discussed that previously. You can check out my previous Ghost in the Shell post video about my concerns on why. I don't know why that video has more dislikes than likes though. I thought I gave solid reasoning about my feelings on the topic. Anyway, after several months, I finally just watched the trailers for the new film. I kinda had to since it was played in front of the new John Wick Chapter 2. Since then, I've been having conflicting emotions. I see some incredible positives, but I have some questions about what the filmmakers are going for as well. As far as the positives, the main positive I'm going in is the look of the film so far based off of the trailers. It looks beautiful. It's a bit reminiscent of the animated films, but it seems to be more influenced by Blade Runner. I can't say that I blame the filmmakers. Blade Runner had a great look and people are still using it as a template today. Another positive is the director Rupert Sanders. While I didn't like Snow White and the Huntsman, it did look good visually. It seems he brought his visual eye to the film as well. The movie also has a pretty good cast. It also showcases scenes taken from the animated film as well. And they appear to be spot on. As far as the negatives, most of the trailers take place at night. I understand the reason for that is because CGI special effects come off better in the dark, but if the majority of the film is like that, then it's going to come off as monotonous. The day scenes are shown in the trailers have a dull, washed out tone, however. Hopefully not all the scenes will come out off like this. Also, this is Rupert Sanders' second major film. There's a good chance that this will be a too big of a film for him to handle. He just may be too green for this type of film. I do wonder why Paramount had him directed and then go to another director to make it like Christopher Nolan or Neil Blomkamp, who have excelled in challenging and philosophical material like this in the past. It's also possible that's why they went with him. They may just want to make a film that doesn't ask a lot from its audience. Also, possibly Nolan has a history with Warner Bros, so they might not have been able to get him because he has a contract with them. Paramount just might want a quick action film. It looks like this film is going to clock in at only at 106 minutes, barely an hour and a half. Some questions I have though is, is the new live action film adapting the animated film, which adapted several segments from the comic? Because certain clips from the trailers are recreations of the first animated film. I'm not sure because it seems as if it, the story of this film is completely different. The graphic novel in the first film had several themes, one of which is personal identity and the other what makes up the human soul. However, it seems because the live action film has a big American movie star that they decided to have her be the focus of the story. While the major is the focus in the earlier films, her place in the story was different. It wasn't about some secret threat that turned her into a cyborg for nefarious means. It was about her trying to find the puppet master. She wasn't trying to rediscover her origin. She was an established character and we get to see through her how she views what constitutes as being a human. Ghost in the Shell asks questions about what makes you human. The more organic portions of you that you lose, can you still be considered human? Is this a necessary step for humanity? The film used the major as the point man for the viewing audience. The new 2017 adaption seems to be going the average route of having the main character who I assume will have am amnesia and have them try to figure out why they were created. It just seems the new film isn't going to really try to challenge the audience like the original source material and the anime films did. Also in other clips, Makoto the Major seems to not be as on the ball as in previous adaptions. The Major has emotions, but she's able to keep it together and use her keen mind and determination in order to solve the issue in front of her. And it doesn't look like that's going to happen in this live action film. One final negative. In the trailers, they're recreating certain scenes from the anime film. If this film story is different, then those images really don't make any sense. It is possible that those scenes aren't even in the film. That's been happening in a lot of recent films, unfortunately. And here are some random things about Ghost in the Shell that you probably should know. 
One, the Japanese manga is funny. There is a severe shift in tone from the comics and every other adaption of it. The comic is full of gags and humor. There is some drug and sex humor, so be warned. A major running gag in the first graphic novel is the major continually getting blown up or damaged. Two, the major doesn't blink. In the original film, the major rarely blinks her eyes. I assume it's because the filmmakers wanted to show how she's almost entirely artificial. Only her brain is organic. I imagine this is going to be changed in the live action film probably because the studio and the filmmakers think that it would be off-putting, which was the point of why she doesn't blink in the anime film. Three, the comic was episodic. When it was made into an anime film, they decided to focus more on the Puppet Master storyline. When I see the film, I will try to not compare it to the previous source material. When I see adaptions of things that I love, I ask for it to only do three things. One, don't be afraid of the source material. You're adapting it for a reason because it's popular. So don't go against the material too much. Example, Gemini Holograms. Ugh. Two, do make an adaption. Don't make a blow by blow recreation, otherwise what's the point? When you do that, you're not adding anything new. And from what I heard, the new Beauty and the Beast live action is so similar that it's redundant. Three, at the very least, have the same spirit of the source material. The movie Logan barely has anything in it in common with the old man Logan storyline, just as Captain America Civil War has very little in common with the Marvel Comics Civil War. But certain tonal shifts and character motivations as well as their personalities are similar. So if a film can at least get that down pat, then I'll be satisfied. Well, that's it for now, and I'm cautiously optimistic. If you're going to see the film, or if you have seen the film, or and are even just a little bit interested in Ghost in the Shell, here's some more information that may help you out 